looks at. The other one dealt with some categorical fundings. Um, and basically what we were saying there is uh, we're going to, in this case, for this year or for next year, we're going to set those numbers in the same year we're budgeting for. I mean, I think that's a good idea. I think we should probably do that going forward. Um, then there was a race to the top bill, uh, which is a federal program where we did not have to do anything to do our application, but we did some things so that we could enhance the application. Um, ultimately, uh, did not support that bill. There were some just some concerns with, with that. Um, to a large extent, uh, some of the changes that were being made in the, in the collected bargaining agreements that really had nothing to do with the application. It was just a vehicle to put that in. The last one of the four was a uh, bill that, that says schools must spend down their cash reserves before they raise property taxes to refill them, but, but they can still carry cash reserves uh, in the first few years at the 25% level, and then it goes to, I think, 20% level in 2013. Um, I supported that bill. The bill, um, well, I mean, the comments I made on the floor, I'll just, uh, just say those. I mean, I thought uh, the governor proposing the bill was an acknowledgment that he raised property taxes last December, and this was, <coughs> this was a mechanism by which to provide some political cover. But at the end of the day, um, there's, no re there's no tax relief in the, in the, in the proposal, and, um, and I'm not sure there's going to be many Iowans that are even going to see a change in their property tax bill as a result of it. In fact, I, I think it's going to be next to no one sees any change. But, you know, there's a, a possibility someone somewhere might, it might save them a few dollars in the property tax bill. And so from that standpoint, I supported it. So isn't it true, though, that the Des Moines schools could have spent uh, increased, pro well, maybe they couldn't, have. maybe they're at the top of their property tax levy. But some school districts could have increased their property tax levy as opposed to going to cash reserves, and this bill stopped that? Um, it, I don't know what percentage level the Des Moines School District right. is at. Um, you don't know I, the percentage I, if level of their reserves as well correct. as whether they're at the property tax levy. N the property tax levy doesn't have anything to do with you this particular You mean they can go thing. to the limit? Uh, as in fact, the current code pushes them to the limit with regard to what's underfunded in the upcoming years. Uh, for th what we're talking about right now in this bill is the current fiscal year and how they're going to get through the budget year uh, given the governor's 10% across the board cut. Their options are to cut their budget, which is really difficult to do mid-year because, because of their teacher contracts and the amount uh, that they're dependent upon employee expenses. Uh, they could go to uh, the cash reserves or if they don't have any cash reserves, there's a statewide loan fund they can borrow from. But if they pick either one of those last two options, the way those get replenished is on the back of the property taxpayer. Uh, Senator Dvorsky, did you support all four bills? Yes. And did you have any of the same concerns <coughs> about the cash reserve issue? I think the, I think the cash reserve isn't going to hit a lot of school districts. It hit those who have way too much cash reserve. As I understand, uh, you know, they're allowed 20% right now, and that's a real good number. Uh, apparently, uh, there's some sort of a standard across uh, public finance that 10% is probably enough to have in place for some of these things. But we're, we allow 20% right now. So it's just, I, I think it's really get it, getting at some that really have a uh, well, very large amount of cash reserve there, and they should use that instead of going to the property taxes. Do we know that some school districts are, are holding much more than that? Yes. Okay. I don't have the, n the numbers, but there's sure. some that had like 70% or something. But uh, they're isolated uh, uh, districts. But it, it's sort of a message that we'd like to see uh, from the legislature and the government. We'd like to see them use any cash they may have available first before they go to property taxes. The, the overwhelming majority are under 20%. Right. There's a handful that right. are 30, 40, 50, and then I think there was one or two that were over right. 50%. Yeah, I heard of one that was 75%, but I didn't know what it was. Um, and I'm not sure that's the accurate number, but that's the number I was given. What about the race to the top, Bill? You were a supporter of that as well? Right. I, I think it's the, the Obama administration's attempt to try and try and to make sure that public education works and, and try some new innovative ideas to, to, to do that. And as uh, Representative Paulson said, I, I think the bill was an attempt to enhance our application, so Iowa has a chance of uh, funding. It's actually individual school districts who end up getting the funds, but the, so the, the state and individual school districts would be able to, to do that. And, and that's what, what the bill did. And then that is another separate issue was, was one dealing with low-performing schools um, that just a separate set of uh, 35 schools across the state that that was a separate one for funding there and uh, did the bill do anything to try and close schools and merge school districts 
Mm -hmm. uh, no. Okay. No. And w your your philosophy. We, we do have in place, though. By the way, just just so people are aware, the 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 uh, school aid formula is. is 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 moving forward into the next few years. I don't have the exact dates, but where you're not going to be able to have additional funds for students who aren't there anymore. That that's moving forward in the next two or three years. That districts will be sort of squeezed down on that. Education spending represents a large part of the state budget, yes. doesn't it? it? Is that something you can really control? I mean, we we need these kids educated. We have all these school districts. Can the state establish policy to reduce the cost of education in the state of Iowa? Well, I think we need to keep looking for efficiencies in everything we do, and, and we'll, we'll continue to do that. I mean, we're, we're, uh, we're looking at the state reorganization, and part of that is looking at efficiencies in, in the way we do uh, business, <coughs> both in education and across the spectrum of state government. And so we're continuing to do that, but obviously that is, I think, one of our number, uh, is our number one priority is education, K through 12, uh, community colleges, private colleges, and the regions. Now, uh, on that issue, you, you guys got right into this. You did the education bill the first week. They're talking about doing the reorganization bill this week. Uh, I don't know if that's really possible, but they're talking about it. Are we working to a shortened session? We are. Uh, we, uh, the legislature decided since there was 10 percent across the board cuts, the legislature wanted to do their part, take 10 percent across the board cut. So all legislators are actually cutting their, their, their salary or small amount of salary received uh, to be a legislator. We're cutting that 20 percent which is probably more than most people uh, have done in state government. And so that means instead of getting paid for 100 days, we're getting paid for 80 days. So we've, we've set up all the deadlines uh, early on. So, uh, you know, it, uh, last Friday, I guess, was the first deadline to have an individual sponsored bill in place. That was last Friday. So the deadlines are sort of yesterday. So they are. They've moved way up. We have a February 12 as our first final date. So. All right. You, you think we'll get out early? <laughs> you know, I... I'd I don't know that. Ask me that question in a couple of weeks. I, th <laughs> I think the question is, um, are the legislative leaders um, <coughs> willing to pitch ideas overboard and come back and do them next year? If the answer to that question is yes, then I think it's, I think it's achievable. Um, if the answer to that question is no and we keep having discussions about um, non-budgetary issues, then, then I think it becomes becomes very difficult. And, the, and with us not getting the governor's budget until uh, the end of the <coughs> month, that also makes it more difficult because that effectively, you know, for Senator Dvorsky's job, to some degree, took 20 days off the front end of the session for him. Now, what do you think uh, about um, the budget? Uh, can we actually balance the budget uh, this year? Do we need another $500 million reduction? Well, we don't have a choice about balancing the budget. We're constitutionally That's true. required to do that. So the people will always we'll, say, we'll, you guys take it out right. of reserve we, for something we, else. We will, we will do that. And uh, it's five or six hundred million is the, the numbers we're sort of looking at, and, and we just have to go through the process. I mean, we're looking at reorg to provide maybe a, a, a savings of 200 million there. And then we're looking at other things. Uh, I hope the, the federal government sort of helps us out on some things. There's talk of doing something for. Uh, FMAP, which is Medicaid, if they can do something in that area, or education, that would be helpful also. What, what's wrong with across-the-board cuts? I mean, that's what the governor did when he was faced with this problem last year after you guys were gone. What's wrong with just doing that, saying every department, you're down another 10 percent? Well, uh, when we're not in session, the, that's the only authority the governor, governor has to do those cuts is an across-the-board cut. Right. So he, he chose that instead of having a special session to But, to but what's forward. wrong with you guys just doing that? Why not just say you're, we're cutting everything? Well, if we would have had a special session, it's really difficult to get sort of to, to do do things in you know one or two day session to get some things no, done. No, I know. I mean this year. Why not? Oh, just ten percent across yeah, the board. Yeah, we're just going to do across the board cut. Well, I think that uh, it, it's better maybe the sort of scalpel approach than, than than doing that. I think we need to look at various departments and things. And the the reorg process is going to help us there. If there's some things we can cut out or, or cut back and that sort of thing, we'll do those things first, and then we'll go back and look at the budget and see where we're at. Do you think there are major programs of state government that need to just be looked at to see can we just eliminate this major function? Well, we've talked about everything being on the table, and I think that's true. Everything, all the ideas are out there, and we need to look at all of them and see what we, we can do. I don't know if there's one major department or anything like that we could close. I don't think that's what we're looking at, but we're looking at various programs. What do you think about keeping the ICN? Could that be sold? The, that's been that's been brought up for years and years and years. Uh, first of all, I don't know if there's a buyer, and secondly, I don't think people are aware of what services it does provide at the ICN. I, I think it would be useful. 